News 4 Jack starts right now with a breaking news alert. A major problem with the parents of the Michigan school shooting suspect. They were supposed to be in court an hour ago to face involuntary manslaughter charges, but they were nowhere to be found. There's been an all out manhunt to find them. And now the attorney for James and Jennifer Crumbly say they're coming back to the area so they can be arraigned. Their attorney says they relocated for their safety. The prosecutor says that they are part of the tragedy because their son had access to the gun used in the mass shooting earlier this week. Police just released the driver's license photos of both James and Jennifer Crumley. They also released a vehicle description. They may be in a black 2021 Kia Celto similar to the one that you see here. It's got a Michigan tag. The plate number would be DQG 5203. Our crime and safety expert Ken Jefferson, who's a retired police officer, he'll join us in a moment. We begin with Tarek and the latest on the search for these parents. Well, multiple agencies, including the FBI and the U.S. Marshals, were looking for the Crumblies. The couple missed their court date, which was scheduled for 4 p.m. Now, the News for Jack's I team uncovered that the Crumblies have ties to Jacksonville. They've lived here in the River City for years and were both arrested for DUI back in 2005. We're also learning more information about their son, Ethan. Prosecutors say he posted on social media about a new gun his dad gave him days before the shooting. And his mother made a social media post saying her son was testing out his new Christmas present. These charges are intended to hold the individuals who contributed to this tragedy accountable and also send a message. On the morning of the Michigan school shooting, prosecutors say 15-year-old Ethan Crumbly's teacher saw him drawing an alarming note that contained a semi-automatic handgun pointed at the words, the thoughts won't stop, help me. Also included in the note, the words, blood everywhere. After Ethan's parents were summoned to the school, school officials say the parents resisted the idea of taking Ethan home and left school without him. At the meeting, James and Jennifer Crumbly were shown the drawing and were advised that they were required to get the sh their son into counseling within 48 hours. Both James and Jennifer Crumbly failed to ask their son if he had his gun with him or where his gun was located and failed to inspect his backpack for the presence of the gun, which he had with him. Prosecutors say it wasn't until after news broke out about the shooting that Ethan's father reported his handgun missing, and his mother Jennifer sent a text to Ethan that read, don't do it. Prosecutors also say the day before the shooting, a teacher observed Ethan searching for ammunition on his phone at school. The teacher reported the information to school officials. His parents did not reply. The same day, prosecutors say Ethan's mother texted her son, LOL, I'm not mad at you. You have to learn not to get caught. I think it is going to be a closely watched case. Uh, I would not be surprised to see some attempt to change the laws in Michigan. Firearms attorney Eric Friday, who's not associated with the case, says Florida law also requires parents to keep guns out of the hands of minors. Friday says the Michigan case could set a precedent if the prosecutors can prove the parents are responsible. The prosecutors somehow show that there was a duty on the parents with all of the facts they knew in that moment at the school meeting that they should have done something, then I think that gives the prosecutor a potential path to get here. But I do think it is a hard path. Lawyer Eric Friday expects the defense also to argue that the school officials were also responsible for not searching the 15 year old's book bag. The prosecutor in this case, Karen McDonald, also said today that she is angry about these preventable deaths, both as a lawyer and also angry as a mother. Mary? Dark, thanks. Now, News for Jack's crime and safety expert Ken Jefferson is joining us now. And Ken, multiple agencies involved, we mentioned, in the search for the parents, the Fugitive Apprehension Team, FBI, and U.S. Marshals. Mm -hmm. And still, I mean, we were told that they are going to turn themselves in. But, I mean, the search still goes on. It, that that to me is kind of comical um, that um, they're saying now that they're going to turn themselves in if if, per, if a person say the lawyer knows where they are and they're hiding for their safety why won't he take the authorities there or compel them to come to where he is so that he can turn this, themselves in so this this whole thing is blown up do, do you think it, they could have been on the run and the and the lawyer may have reined them back in possibly 
that, that could be the case, or they could still be on the run. Yeah. Mm. They could be telling the, uh, the attorney this to buy themselves more time mm -hmm. uh, to get away, to go uh, across the country uh, of some sort. So we don't know at this point, but the manhunt has to continue with the local, federal, and the state authorities. Mm -hmm. They've got to deploy all those resources to try to find them, regardless of what the lawyers say. Ken, one of the things that stands out here, the sheriff of Oakland County there in Michi Michigan, is saying the prosecutor announced these charges without bringing in the sheriff's office first. And so there's lots of concern. Hey, why weren't these parents under surveillance or whatever? And he's saying that basically not good communication here. That seems critical, right? You know, the, the sheriff, no matter what city or county that you're in, the sheriff and the state attorneys have to work together. It has to be a cohesive group working together. And they have to be on the same page of communication. Uh, putting myself in the position of the sheriff for a brief moment, if I was the sheriff, I would be upset with the state attorneys for announcing charges against someone when they don't, they're not going to send anyone out to arrest them. The sheriff is responsible for going out and deploying the resources to arrest them. So I would be uh, particularly uh, upset with the att state attorneys for not being in constant communication, letting us know what's going on and what we needed to do to work together to get these people off the streets. And a lot it of head a little embarrassing all it's, the it's way very, around. Sorry. Head scratching too over why wasn't his backpack searched? Yeah, I mean, he was at, he was at school. There was for, therefore a conference because of his issues that he's had and the school ba basically told him they needed to, to k k take him home mm -hmm. and they refused. And he's sitting there with a backpack with a weapon in it and nobody checked it, nobody even inquired about it, particularly with all of the things that uh, he was going through at that time. Yeah. Ken Jefferson, appreciate it. I know you're lots of experience uh, with the sheriff's office and in policing. Appreciate your insights here. Sorry. Now coming up tomorrow on The Morning Show, a local attorney is joining us live to explain the charges that these parents face. Parents in the U.S. rarely are charged in school shootings involving their children. So we're going to do a deep dive on this. That'll be at 8.30 tomorrow on The Morning Show.